Hi, Veronica. How's it going? Hi, Chloe. I'm good. But I'm curious and a bit anxious about why you're suddenly interested in me. <laughs> Come on, sister-in-law. I care about my husband's family, don't I? Or are you implying that I only text you when I need something from you? Well, isn't that the truth? Just spit it out, Chloe. What do you want this time? Fine, I'll cut to the chase. Are you and your mother staying at home this weekend? Nope, we are going away for a bit, but we will be back on Sunday night. Do you need anything from us? Really? Sunday night only? Yeah, sorry. Actually, we have plans to go to a spa resort from Friday night. It's been on our bucket list for a long time now. Really? A spa resort? That sounds amazing. I'm so envious of you. Where are you going to go? We've been wanting to have some quality time together for a long time, but this time we're just going to the resort a few towns over. Maybe next time we'll be able to go somewhere further for a little longer. Oh, well, that still sounds so good. Now that you mention it, I've got no plans from Friday afternoon onwards. Do you think I can join you too? I need some pampering too. Martin will be coming home on Friday night, so he'll be a little late, but he can catch up and we can have a bit of a celebration before he comes, though it'll be just us girls. Veronica, you'll be driving your car, right? Do you know what I really like? I love stopping off at those big parking lots off the highway and checking out all the restaurants and facilities that they have. You don't get to see them in your normal day-to-day -day lives. Well, this is going to be fantastic. Yeah, but you see, we've already made reservations, and it's only for two people for two nights. Don't worry about that. Surely there will be no problems at all. We just need to sneak in. Surely their front reception won't notice us. We'll just make sure to be quiet when we are there. Well, I don't think this is a good idea. I'm pretty sure you will get found out. These resorts aren't so daft, you know. Furthermore, are you suggesting that you both stay in the same room as my mother and me? Aren't you at least going to try and book your own room? Why would we do that? Booking an extra room is going to cost a lot more money, duh. After all, we spent so much money on our wedding and honeymoon. We even had to take out a loan to pay for it all. So really, there isn't much to spare on little pleasure trips like this. You know how much he earns, don't you? Certainly not enough to pay off our debts very quickly. As if I know how much my brother earns. I have no idea. Anyway, forget about that. If we all go together, there will be no need for me to go and see you on Sunday night. I'll be able to kill two birds with one stone. Alright, so that's settled. Let's do this. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, but we really only have the reservation for two people. I can't take along two extra people without paying. If you really want to go, then you will need to make your own reservation. Would you like the number? Yeah, but I told you, we don't have the money for that. Back to your initial question, is there something you need to see us for this weekend? Oh yeah, that's right, I forgot. We still have some souvenirs to give you from our honeymoon. We've been meaning to give them to you for a while now, but just haven't had the chance. Souvenirs from your honeymoon? If I remember correctly, that was over six months ago, right? Yes, that's right. It is really hard for Martin to take time off work, but in the end, we had such a great time. We have a lot of photos we want to show you and give you these souvenirs. This weekend, Martin has no shifts rostered, so we thought it would be the perfect time to get together and reminisce. I see. Well, if that's the case, like I said, we'll be home on Sunday evening. It would be great to catch up with you then. Yeah, I really don't want to go out on a Sunday evening. Unnamed, not just for me, but Martin has to work on Monday, and I really want him to be able to rest up for work. Normally on Sunday afternoons, he likes to take it easy at home all day. That sounds so much like Martin. He's been like that for the longest time. He rarely left the house on Sunday afternoons or evenings when he was living at home, too. It's fine for me. I have no problem going out on Sundays or even staying out until really late at night. Yes, I understand the situation. After all, you are a full-time housewife, so the demands on your time are not so strict, are they? You got me there. But you know, there's only so much housework that can be done in a limited place like our apartment. Anyway, back to my point. I really want to give you these souvenirs and talk to you about some things. Are you sure we can't join you at the spa resort? I see no problem with you joining us. But like I said, you have to reserve a room for yourselves. And like I said, we don't have the money for that, so that's not going to happen. Yeah. Okay, so we both agree that you are not going to be joining us. Surely you realize that sneaking into a room without booking or paying is against the rules and tantamount to stealing. Man, you are so cheap. Well, then how about next weekend? Well, let me see. Next weekend, I'll be free to see you on Sunday in the morning. What? Again? Only on Sundays? Yeah, I'm sorry. But again, my mother and I both have plans on Saturday and Sunday afternoon. Okay, 
Well, I will check with Martin what his plans are and if it looks doable. We will go on Sunday morning to give you these souvenirs. You better keep your schedule free for us. Sure, sure. No problem. By the way, you said you wanted to talk about something. Is anything wrong? Is it anything urgent? Well, it's sort of urgent, but I guess it's nothing that can't wait until next week. It would be better to talk to you in person anyway. Hey, now that I think about it, if we are going there on Sunday morning, why don't we have lunch together? If I remember correctly, there is a fantastic little pizza place near your house. I'm pretty sure they do deliveries. What do you think about that? Yes, there is a place, and they do deliver. Fantastic! Can you make the order for us? And make sure to order their Super Supreme pack, the one that has garlic bread, chicken wings, and a large salad. It's so delicious and filling. Getting this Super Supreme pack for four people would be a little bit pricey. Are you sure you're okay with that? Sure, no problem at all. After all, we will be the guests at your house, so we are looking forward to you treating us. Hang on a moment. Are you suggesting that I have to pay for your lunch? Absolutely. I don't know why you need to ask that question. We are the guests in your house, so it's natural that you pay. Maybe you can ask your mother to pay for it? I'm sure there's still plenty of money left over from your father as well. Surely she has no financial problems at the moment. It will be no problem at all for her to pay. Well, first of all, maybe you have forgotten, but my mother is not a big fan of pizza. And your point is... Well, don't you think it's a little rude to ask someone who doesn't even like pizza to make an order for pizza, pay for it, and then not be able to eat any of it? I don't think it's rude at all. After all, she is inviting us into her house. The least she can do is give us some good old-fashioned hospitality. I'm sorry to have to break it to you, but we actually have plans for lunch, so we're not going to be able to eat together. That's okay. Just go ahead and order enough for me and Martin. We'll probably skip breakfast that day, so it will be sort of like brunch. I don't mind eating before noon anyway. Maybe you could join us then too. I'll have to ask mom. It will all depend on what her schedule is. Are you okay to work around that? Sure, that's no problem. Just let me know when you know what time is best. And don't forget to order the pizza. We're really looking forward to it. Veronica, how stingy are you and mom? We go all that way to see you and all you can do is serve us some coffee and biscuits. We were totally expecting pizza. After all, you discussed it at length with Chloe two weeks ago. I don't know what you're going on about. After all, you do know mom doesn't like pizza. And then to go ahead and demand that we order a super lunch set just for you two? Who do you think you are, some kind of royalty? You know we're not made of money, right? Surely she should be able to welcome us as guests and provide some simple hospitality. You know. Something more than just coffee and biscuits. Something that would actually fill our stomachs and make us feel appreciated. Perhaps if you wanted to be treated as a guest, you should have a little more respect for the house owner's wishes. After all, we did tell you we had plans for noon and asked for you to be here before 10.30. And what time did you end up arriving? Not until after 11. And then to have the nerve to demand that we provide you lunch and hang around arguing the point until afternoon when you knew we already had plans to go out? How inconsiderate can you be? Yeah, in the end, we got thrown out of the house. How rude is that? You know, we came all this way to see you and mom, and this is how you treat us. Like we're some kind of intruders or beggars. We're family for crying out loud. We deserve some respect and courtesy. Yeah, totally. And on top of that, you said you had some souvenirs from your honeymoon and some other things that you wanted to discuss. Then you almost ran out of time to give us the souvenirs. How rude of us. And while I'm at it, the souvenirs were just fridge magnets. And you never did talk about what you wanted to discuss. I don't even know if there was a real reason why you had to come and see us so urgently. I suspect that you just wanted someone to buy you lunch. Am I wrong? Or maybe you had some other ulterior motive. We were just hoping to have some food on the table while we had a little discussion. You know, it's easier to negotiate on a full stomach. Negotiate? What is it that you wanted to negotiate? You know... We wanted to discuss you and mom giving us ownership of that house. You know, the one where you live right now. The one that dad left for mom in his will. I'm sorry, that's a little bit sudden. What brought this on? Well, you see, the thing is, Chloe is pregnant. Pregnant? Don't you think that should be the first thing you mentioned before any of this other stuff? Yeah, well, anyway, the place we are renting right now is only for two people. If we have a child, we will have no choice but to move out. I'm sure you can imagine, but it's going to cost a lot of money to have a baby. 
There's the baby shower that we have to organize, setting up a nursery, and buying all the things we need. So we decided the best thing to do is to move out of this apartment. Yes, I can see how that would require a bit of money, but how does that equate to asking for ownership of this house? Don't you see it? I'm the oldest son, so that gives me the rights to the house. Now that dad has passed away, I am the oldest male in the household. So it's my birthright to take over the house. It's only fair and natural. Yeah, I don't think that's right. That's not how inheritance works or how property rights work or how anything works in this day and age. You can't just claim something that doesn't belong to you based on some outdated notion of primogeniture or patriarchy or whatever. Of course it's right. I'm the man of the house now since dad's gone. I'm going to get what's coming to me. Even Chloe agrees with me. She thinks it's a great idea for us to move in there and raise our child in a nice big house with a yard and a garage and everything. So that's why we are going to move in. And you and mom have to move out and find your own place to live. Hang on a moment. What do you mean we have to move out? That's a little bit sudden, don't you think? After all, this house is not yours, nor is your name on any of the legal paperwork. You have no right to claim ownership of it. Even just trying to change the title deeds would be a major headache. I'll leave that part to mom. It should be no problem. After all, it's her first grandchild. She's definitely going to be happy to give me control of the house when she realizes that. The lease is up for renewal on our current place next month. So we'll simply not renew and move in there. I mean, it's going to be so much easier to move before the baby is born. Don't you agree? Next month? You expect to move in here on such short notice? How can you go ahead with such planning without even discussing it with us in the first place? Surely you don't expect us to find a new place and move out in that same amount of time, do you? Yeah, surely there's no problem with that. After all, you're still single, so it's easy for you to move. Mom still got heaps of money from Dad's will, so she'll have no problem paying for a new place. And if she really needs to, she can always move back to her old place anyway. It's still there. Mom's old place? That's so far away you need to take a plane to get there. That's where she grew up, not where she lives now. She hasn't been there in years. How can you suggest such a thing? Your point being? I don't care that you are her son. There are limits to what you can say and do. This is going way too far. You can't just barge in here and demand that we give up our house for you and your wife and your unborn child. Look, whatever. Just letting you know that we're going to be moving next month whether you like it or not. It's going to be mom's first grandchild and your first niece or nephew. So I expect you will do this little thing for us. That's what we wanted to discuss. Can you pass on the message to mom? Hang on, hang on. You can't make such a big announcement over a message and then expect me to pass it on. You have to do this one in person by yourself. Martin, you have to tell this to mom yourself. You have to face her and look her in the eye and tell her what you're planning to do. You can't just hide behind a screen and dump this on me. Hey Veronica, have you and your mother decided on your moving out date yet? You know, we're really eager to move into your house as soon as possible. Chloe, big congratulations on your pregnancy. We are so happy to hear all of it. Of course, we really want to celebrate and have a big party for you, which is why we're not going to move out. We want to stay here and enjoy this house with you and Martin and your future child. Well, we plan to have another baby or two after this, so we really need a larger place to live. But of course, on Martin's salary, we're not going to be able to afford a big house. It's going to be so hard enough just getting a bank loan to pay a deposit. Even a tiny three-bedroom house way out in the boonies is too expensive for us. That's why we're counting on you and mom to give us your house for free. I hear what you're saying, but your financial problems have nothing to do with me. You can't just expect us to give up our home for you and your family. That's not fair or reasonable. Ever since I got married to Martin, I truly believe that one day his family home would also be my home. After all, he's the oldest son, so he deserves to inherit the house from his parents. Since you got married, you mean for the past six months? You've only been married for six months and you already think you have a claim to our house? As you know, we are both in our 30s already. The whole body clock is ticking. I want a house. I want children. I want to raise a happy, healthy family. I don't have much time to waste. That's why I need to get moving straight away. You do realize that giving birth costs a lot of money, right? Not only that, you need a lot of money to actually raise a child and properly educate them too. If you're not able to build a house on Martin's salary, 
Do you think you'll have enough money to raise a large family? That will be fine. There's no worry there. After all, seeing as how we won't have to pay rent or purchase the house, we can put all of Martin's salary into raising our family. We'll have plenty of money left over for other things too, like vacations, hobbies, and entertainment. What? Am I to understand that you have no intention to pay anything for this house? You just want us to hand it over to you for nothing. Well, naturally, we will pay the appropriate taxes required, seeing as how it's going to become Martin's house. We're not going to be freeloaders or anything like that. We'll do our part as responsible citizens and homeowners. Is that so? I see. Yeah. Veronica, you really should think about getting married soon. After all, your father passed away two years ago now, right? It's time you found a new man for your life now that he is gone. And then you can forget about all the memories left in that old house. Leave the past in the past, I say. You are so desperate to move into this house, aren't you? Absolutely. Naturally, I want to live in a big house. But I really don't want to live with my mother-in-law. That would be terrible. I'd have no freedom at all. I just want you guys to hurry up and move out as soon as you can. Is that too much to ask? Fine. We'll move out. Yay! Thank you. I'm so lucky. Thanks, sis. You said next month, right? Is the end of next month okay with you? I'd prefer if you could move out before that. I can't wait to move into your house and start decorating it and making it our own. It's going to be so much fun. It is going to take some time to find a new place. Also, I have to work during the day, so I can't spend so much time looking. Oh, well, I guess it can't be helped. But definitely the end of the month, right? I can't let you extend any more past that. I expect you will keep your promise. Okay, I'll let you know when I know some more. Veronica, can you answer the phone? I've been trying to call your mother, but I can't get in touch with her. Yeah, mom has blocked you and Martin on her phone. Well, to say that truthfully, I'm the one that set up the block for her. Why would you do that? I was under the impression that you wanted nothing to do with her anymore. So really, you should have no reason to call her anyway. But it's an emergency. I really need to talk to her. An emergency? What's wrong? Martin and I just moved into the house, and it's totally empty. There's absolutely nothing here. Yes, that's right. When we moved out, we took all the furniture and appliances with us. The things we didn't need, we sold. What? No, that can't be true. You can't do that. You mean you took the fridge? The iRobot cleaner? How can we be expected to live without those items? What are you talking about? Didn't you bring all the appliances and furniture from your house when you moved? Normally that's what people do. They bring their things with them. That's why it's called moving. All the things in our old place were items that Martin had from his bachelor days. It was all old and breaking, so we ended up throwing most of it away. The fridge, the washing machine, the TV, almost everything. It was all old. This new house had all brand new appliances. The TV was huge. Are you saying that you expected us to move out of the house and leave all of the furnishings and appliances there? What were we supposed to do when we moved into our new place? When we discussed taking over the house, we meant we wanted everything that was inside of it too. Ha! Huh, that's the first I've heard of it. In fact, I've never heard anyone being so demanding ever. But how are we going to live? That seems rather simple to me. You can just go to the shops and purchase the things you need. There's no way we can afford that. Brand new appliances are very expensive. The whole reason we had you guys move out of here was because we had no money. Well, then that's going to make things really tough for you. Now that you have to pay $3,000 a month in rent. What? $3,000 in rent a month? That's right. Didn't Martin tell you about that bit? Martin says he doesn't know what you are talking about. He doesn't? Well, in the meeting with the real estate agent just two weeks ago, in which Martin was present, that part was definitely explained in detail. Martin should have the documents in his possession. He said the meeting went on for so long and the explanation was so detailed that he started to drift out towards the end. He said the agent kept talking on and on. He could hardly focus on the horse race results. Horse race results? Oh no. You don't mean to tell me he was listening to the races on his headphones at the same time? It was an important race. Unbelievable. Anyway, it's not our fault or problem that he wasn't paying attention to the meeting. The paperwork has been signed, the official renters of the property have been changed to you and Martin, and there is nothing more we can do about it. Official renters of the property? What are you talking about? You make it sound like we are simply renting the house now? Wasn't this house fully paid off before your father died? Wasn't mom made the legal owner of the house in the will? What are you talking about? We've always been renting this house. 
We moved here when Martin and I were still in primary school, and we've been renting it ever since. Renting? Yes, that's right. The original owner of the house was my father's brother, in other words, my uncle. But my uncle is so busy with work that he's hardly ever in the country. Sometimes he's back for a few days, but that's about all. He didn't want to sell the house, but he let my father live in it to keep in good condition. But he still expected rent to be paid for it. Oh yeah, as well as a set time that he would allow us to stay here. A set time to stay there? Yes, that's right. He only wanted us to stay there until it was time for him to retire. When he retires, he plans to settle back down into the house. No way. You're lying right now, aren't you? Are you meaning to say, when is he planning to retire? Next autumn. Next autumn? That's less than a year away. Yes, I know. That's why I know we had to move out at some point in time anyway. Mom has been pretty busy trying to find just the right place to move into. One of the reasons we have been traveling around and staying at the spa resorts was to check out some different areas that we might like to move to. After all, Mom likes spa resorts, so it was a good excuse to go and visit some. Hang on! So you mean to say you've been paying $3,000 a month in rent this whole time? If we have to pay $3,000 in rent, that's almost all of Martin's monthly salary, gone! Well, no, we weren't paying the $3,000 for rent. Part of the deal was that if we looked after the house and the surrounding area too, and kept it very clean and tidy, we only had to pay $800 a month. $800? Well, we will also look after the house and keep the area around it clean and tidy. We want the same deal. That's not up to me to decide. After all, my uncle doesn't really trust Martin very much. Uncle is aware of how this transaction has gone down, and doesn't seem too impressed by it. Also, it was a long time ago, but Uncle is aware that it was Martin who smashed the valuable collection of china plates he had. And there were numerous times when Martin damaged the walls in the house and Uncle had to pay for the repairs out of his own pocket. Ever since Martin moved out of the house after high school, there have been no problems and the house has been kept in immaculate condition. So you're saying that because your uncle doesn't trust Martin, we will have to pay $3,000 in rent? If you look at the size and location of the house, you will realize that $3,000 is actually very reasonable. Also, if you aren't careful and can't keep the house clean, then you'll probably be made to pay for damages out of your own pocket. That was also part of the deal. Any damages would have to be paid for by whoever was living there at the time the damage occurred. We had a feeling that you and Martin were unaware that we were renting the house, which is why we asked the real estate agent to explain it to you in detail before any documents were signed. But it would appear that even with the correct explanation, you were unable to actually understand the situation. Well, where is mom living now? I'm not going to tell you. Is she staying with you? Did she move somewhere together? If you're living together, why don't we all live together in your new place? I seem to recall you saying once that you did not want to live with your mother-in-law, that you couldn't stand it. Yes, but now I have had some time to think about it. This is my first child. I could really do with some sound advice from an experienced mother. I really think it would be better if she was there for me. My mother is not a servant to be used as you wish. But it is her first grandchild. Surely she would want to help where she could. Mom has blocked you and Martin from contacting her. I'm pretty sure that constitutes her answer to your question. So what do you expect me to do from now on? How am I going to live? That's something that you and your husband are going to have to figure out by yourselves. Not that it's important, but no, I am not living with my mother. You're not? Then where are you? I'm not going to tell you that either. But if you really must know, I've moved in with my boyfriend. Boyfriend? You have a boyfriend? Yes. Well, you could call him a boyfriend. Perhaps it would be more correct to call him my fiancé. We decided to move in together so that we can start preparing for our life together. Are you for real? Yes. At the end of the day, Uncle was planning on coming home next autumn, so we had to move out anyway. Everything sort of just fell into place. I asked my fiancé what we should do, and he agreed this is the path we should take. It just happened a little bit faster than expected. Every day is a wonderful day. I am so happy, and I guess I have you to thank for all of this. But my future looks so bleak right now. Two years ago, my father passed away. Then a year after that, my brother got married to you. To tell you the truth, I was also feeling that I should hurry up and start a family of my own. Once I get married, my surname will change, and then I will have nothing more to do with you and my brother. This seems to be the most fitting way to finally end our relationship. Hang on! Don't go saying anything that you're going to regret! I can't imagine what it would be like without having you in our lives! Please, please reconsider! Please don't abandon your family like this!
Shortly after that communication, I promptly blocked my brother and sister-in-law on my phone, so I actually don't know how they have been getting along. But I heard through the grapevine that they weren't able to pay their rent, and after three months of not paying, they were evicted from the house. My uncle had initially demanded that the house be looked after and kept clean and tidy, but without even worrying about that, he was forced to chase after the unpaid rent first. He was furious when he saw the state of the house. It was filthy, messy, and damaged. He had to spend a lot of money to fix it up and find new tenants. I'm pretty sure that my brother is fairly broke and there is no way that they could afford to find a new place to live. I have a feeling that they may have moved back into Chloe's parents' place to make ends meet. Now that their child has been born, I'm pretty certain that they're both working as hard as they can to try and make ends meet. At least, that's what I hope is happening. I don't want them to suffer, but I also don't want them to bother me or my mother ever again. They made their choices, and they have to live with the consequences.